Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey. We're live. I think we're live. We're live. <laughs> we are live. I love this technical stuff you got to figure out right when you go on. You know, we don't have a staff here, right? I know. I know. Hey, listen, you know, I guess it teaches us, right? We're constantly learning, right? That's a great thing. Always, always. And I want to welcome everybody to Build It Through Culture Live. Appreciate you guys joining us here tonight. I know it is after dinner, maybe you're stretching, maybe you're drinking a glass of wine or your favorite drink and you're kind of winding up your day. So we really appreciate you coming and hanging out with us um, because yeah. you could be doing almost anything else like going to sleep. But yeah, or listen, you know, it, it is the holiday season. So for those of you that are celebrating Hanukkah, uh, you know, we wish you a very, very happy uh, Hanukkah. So Absolutely. and thank you. If you're taking the time to spend this hour with Rob and I, we really appreciate it. Hey, if you're here, you know, uh, shoot your shoot some stuff in the comments. Let us know that you're here. Let us know you're here. And um, while you're doing that, while you guys are checking in there, I'm um, just going to introduce myself. For those of you who don't know, if you've never been here before, or you're not part of the, the usual crew that supports us. I'm Rob Genovese. And um, I'm a, I'm a built and brand builder. I have a company called Unleash My Beast Brand. We're a branding and design company. And um, I started that out as a website and design company, evolved into a branding company, and it's become a passion of mine. And that's what I do for my work. And then in our circles of networking, Master Networks is the networking circles we travel in. That's how Steph and I met. And uh, that is where we spend a lot of our time meeting new people, creating new opportunities for people. And I'm gonna let Steph introduce herself. Hi, everybody. Um, I am Stephanie Bellafato, and, uh, you know, Rob and I are both on the National and Regional Culture Team together, as well as uh, I'm, I'm a president of the Carmel Chapter, and um, I represent Surpro. We're a local disaster recovery specialist, um, so we clean up all kinds of disasters like fire, water, mold, biohazard, crime scene cleanup, um, you know, uh, we do it all, you know, from the beginning to the end. So we make it like it never even happened is what I let everybody know. I love that tagline, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. I love As a brand, hey, I, I love when you say that. We make it like, an because I picture that. I'm thinking, that's a great line. Because think about that. A person who has their house demolished by fire or, or water. And to make it like it never even happened, that must be the ultimate for a person that goes through that. Yeah. You know, there's somebody I, who knows. Yeah, Mike Baxter. Hey, Mike. I've and heard I of just you, Mike. want to remind everybody because it is the you know festival of lights and people are are stringing things together and lighting candles. Please don't leave them unattended and don't plug in more than three strands together. That becomes a fire hazard. It is. Watch pets around those things too. You can't plug in more than three strands. You should not plug in more than three three strands together, Rob. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. It's so glad to see some of you on here. Hey, Barry, Regina, Justin, Lisa, Jennifer. Um, oh, awesome. Thank thanks you for, for coming. By. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by and putting up with us sometimes. You know, we like to laugh, <laughs> and this is going to be highly interactive. So, you know, if, you, if you're out there, we don't want you just sitting and watching us. Like, we don't even want to really sit and ever watch us. We want you to, to be involved. We want you to ask questions. We want you to comment. We want you to call BS if we say something you don't agree with because, you know, yeah. <laughs> what's up, Steph and other Rob? <laughs> I'm the other one. Oh, there you go. There you go. Rob, hey, listen, and, and if you guys think that this is a value, share it on your pages with other people so that they could see what we do here, too. Yeah, please share it. Please share it because this is going to be a lot of fun if you're hanging out on here. And look, you're probably just going to be watching TV anyway. Forget TV. Forget you know, don't don't go watching any shows on Let Netflix. Let us be your TV for an hour. <laughs> yeah, they'll learn something here. So your brain won't turn to mush. I love to look at Jennifer's comment. She puts the menorah in the sink because she's scared. There, good idea, <laughs> Jen. That's so super smart. And hey, listen, you know, I say too, I don't even buy real candles anymore. I buy battery operated candles. And sometimes you can even get scented ones. So that's a great thing too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Look at uh, Jen, Jeopardy's, Jeopardy's on. on. 
Yeah, but who's hosting? I mean, since Alex is gone, it's really not not a good use of your time anymore. So stick around here. Hanukkah <laughs> <laughs> is the very first supply chain problem. Barry, always with a joke. Thank Ooh, you, Barry. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, that's good. So if you're if you're joining us for the first time, for the third time, for whatever time here, we started this uh, a few episodes ago. This is the third episode. And what we're doing is we have a, a bit of a format that we're following here. And we decided that because culture was this thing, you know, when Steph and I first got together, and of course, uh, through Tina Campbell, who is the queen of culture, um, regional partner in Master Networks, um, a mentor and coach of mine, very good friend of ours, just phenomenal person, great leader. And she would talk about the culture all the time, remember? And then, and you're, you predate me in Master Networks, Steph, but yeah. I don't know if culture was, if, if even you guys understood at the time, you know, I always but understood how I felt, right? Because it always goes back to how you feel. And the first time I I came to visit Master Networks, I felt so warm and welcomed. And that, to me, is so super important, right? Um, and that's because that's what Tina fosters with all of us, right? Yeah. So, you know she kind of sets the tone and we follow the lead, right? She's always warm and welcome. She's always asking people, how can I help you? What can I do to help you? Who are you looking for? You know, just the fact that she goes out of her way to do that for all of us, I think speaks volumes. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Debbie. Yeah, she does. She, you know, and that was one of the, I was talking with somebody today and she was asking me about, um, Master Networks and my involvement in it. And and I didn't mention it before, but but I'm an area director for Master Networks. I'm a regional advisor on culture. Uh, Steph is on that team with me, as well as um, the national team as well with Tina. But, um, you know, it, it's it's kind of like this thing where, like you said, it's, it's how you make people feel. It's how you feel. In the yeah. beginning was how I felt. And, and I was just joining a networking group to get client referrals like everybody else and there's nothing wrong with that we all want the clients but i joined and i was part of a couple of other networking groups i come into master networks and i'm like this is different this is different i like the way this feels so yeah. i don't need to intellectualize everything i just go i feel yeah. right you don't need to think about everything no no because what are you going to do is size every person up in the room? Well, I got to meet everybody first before I make a decision. Really? Well, sometimes you got to lead with your heart, right? What does your heart tell you? What does your gut tell you? Like, you know, you can you can feel like a vibration in a room, right? You feel the energy in a room when you walk in it. You can tell whether people are going to be, you know, uplifting or whether they're going to be a bunch of negative Nancys. Yeah, well, you, you go in that. You're right. You lead with your heart. You go with what you feel. And when it comes to people... No, I, I know they say dogs are experts at judging characters and people, but I think we're pretty good too as people. I think if we just let ourselves stop thinking so much sometimes and just go with what we feel, because I have met people that my brain has said, this is a good person, good, solid, grounded person. And then there was something inside me here that said, something's not right there. Right. And after a year, I find out, whoa, they were doing some messed up stuff. Yeah. So your heart usually knows if you just give it a chance. And so, yeah, and you're famous for this, right? This is pretty much the theme that you set out when we started working together as part of the culture of how you make people feel. Yeah, it's important, I think. And, I, you know, if and that's why I always say spread love, right? Spread love, because if you just spread love. That's what's going to come back to you. Whatever we put out there, that's what's going to come back to us. Yeah. And I want, exactly. hey, Maggie, and I want it to be good stuff, right? Like, I don't want Always it. good stuff. Always so, good stuff. And, and, and we always say, you know, it's the people that you surround yourself with, right? Your closest five people, right? Yeah. That's really true. The, you know, I thought about that before because I've heard that for many years. Um, you know, you're going to be the sum total of your five closest relationships or something like right. that. Some kind of smart sounding equation, I suppose. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, well, just five. So what if I surround myself with like 25 really good people? Amazing people, right? Right. Amazing people. 
That's what right. I've done. So, you know, you develop these relationships and, you know, that is our first core value. The relationships, um, I was taught years ago, relations come in degrees, right? So you're not going to be close with everybody. No. But those you really have a connection with, you can get close with. And as long as they're quality people in life, and I always think that quality people are people that are always learning, people that are always giving, then yes. you're going to have really good relationships. I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. And, you know, um, I don't know. I just, I always feel, and I've said this too before, like, you know, it doesn't matter how you may feel when you go to a meeting, you always leave better than you came, right? Because you've learned something from someone in the meeting or they've provoked a thought in you, right? Yeah. And I think that's important. It is. So Lisa, she's backing it up uh, here with some stuff she knows about. Right. We know Lisa. She she understands this stuff probably better than anybody. Go with your Lisa. gut. And then there's there's science behind it, right? Lisa, sacral and solar plexus chakras know the deal. <laughs> like yeah. the deal. And I gotta tell you, I've I've worked with Lisa. If you haven't worked with Lisa, if you've ever done Reiki or you you've considered doing Reiki, contact Lisa. She is so helpful. It's amazing what she does. And she can do it remotely. That's which pretty is amazing. Which is really crazy incredible, but it's so Call cool. Lisa, Lisa put cool. your phone number out for our yeah, 100,000 viewers. <laughs> you guys put your info in the chat for people. If, yeah. if you want, if you want to connect with them, um, definitely do that for sure. We but got some uh, more people checking oh, in here. Larry, Larry Blackman checking in here. We got Rachel. Rach, hey, right Rach. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good one. So we're 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 starting with the core values, right? The five core values, and that's how we yeah. started out the episodes. Uh, number one was was relationships. Uh, number two was constant improvement, yeah. and the third one is well, I'm going to let let's let them put it in there. Who's going to be the first to tell us what the yeah, third who's gonna one be is? The first to put it in. It's going to be the first. What's the third core value? Come on, people, let's go. <laughs> They're a little slow on the keys. Come on, who's gonna put it in? Come on, come on. Oh, come on. Ooh. Come on, Rachel. <laughs> it's always Rachel. <laughs> All right. So it's, to be fair, we know that a lot of you know this, but that's why we say who's gonna be the first. So you gotta be a good guy right. too, I suppose. <laughs> right. And so you gotta spell my... it right, and they both did. So Barry, you're, you're you number go. two, but Rachel won that one. <laughs> so, so that... I have a question, right? I have a question for all of you tonight. Um with respect to contribution, what are you involved in, either in your chapter or in your community that you contribute to? Please put some stuff in the chat for us. Yeah, we want to hear. What? We want to hear that because everybody gives in different ways, right? And I didn't start out. I was not a giver, and I'm I'm, a, I'm ashamed to actually say that. But you know, maybe everybody's got their own journey to overcome, and I wasn't really a giver. I was looking to get because remember last episode we were talking about it and I was, I was calling myself a loser, but I wasn't calling myself a loser. I was just saying I was losing. Right. I wasn't, I wasn't winning. And the reason I wasn't winning was I was trying to get. Right. I get all the time. But that's And you always get thing. more when you give. I always feel like, right. Just keep Some giving. Reason. Yeah. So when I understood this, the contribution, don't just show up. Don't just show up and go, okay, what am I going to get out of this? No matter what it is, right? So whether it's a networking group, whether it's a party, right? What are you going to bring to the event? You go to dinner right. with somebody, with people. What do you, yeah, what do you what bring? What conversation are you going to talk? Are you going to just sit there? What, you know, what do you contribute to the conversation? Um, yeah. You know, it's important. It's, and people want to hear what you have to say. I think that's the problem. I think because maybe because I'm just looking at through my own frame of reference and how I a former version of myself, I didn't think that anybody cared what I had to say. So maybe it's a little bit of insecurity. But what, what I found is everybody, I mean, naturally, everybody has experience in life and maybe in business or on their job, or their work, right? Whatever their work is, you have experience. So it's valuable to somebody and somebody in the room needs to hear it. Maybe right, not everybody. Share it. Right. You gotta share it. So is that risk? That risk of, 
well, what if my idea is stupid or what if they shoot it down or what if, you know, uh, somebody one ups me and they come out with a better idea. None of that matters. You just have to bring it. Yeah. Agreed. Ooh, Would you want to, you want me to put up some of these things now? Yeah, put up some here? of the, put, well, actually, you know, you guys, come on, everybody put some stuff into the chat. We'll, what we'll are wait you a little doing? while longer. Yeah. What are you doing in your chapter or your community? Um, giving back, giving in some way, right? Contributing in some way. And I'll tell you this, um, you want to talk about, um, when, when you're in that mindset, that might, that frame of mind of, you know, you truly want to give, here's an interesting story. So uh, if some of you know, my wife and she's a registered nurse and she's literally saved lives in certain situations over the years. She's been in that position where she had to save life and she's done that. And I remember thinking a bunch of years back, I'm just a graphic designer. Like, I'm not saving anybody's lives. I'm not making a big difference. Like, how could I help anybody, you know, with graphic design? I, I was looking for, you know, an organization to, to help with. Maybe I could use graphic design because that's the only skill I had. And I, I said to Ann, I said, you know, you, you're really helping people. I'm not real. I said, I would love to find a way I could help and give back with what I do, but I don't really know how I could do that. And two weeks later, this woman calls me up. It's a neighbor of ours. She goes, hey, you know, I I'm on the, on the board of this local charity and we need some flyers done. We need like uh, some design work done. Would you be willing to do that for our local charity? And I was like, whoa. <laughs> That's freaky there, stuff, man. There you go. Well, you put it out into the universe, right? You're out there. So I ended up um, still do work for them, do flyers, do design work. I, I, they didn't really have much of a website. I designed and built the website, you know, for free. I gave my time and and I paid to have that hosted for them. And 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 look, it's not that I'm so great. It's just if you're looking for ways to help, you have something you can give. There's always something, and if you put it out there, something's gonna opportunity will come. Absolutely. And look, it doesn't have to be like Rob just said, you know, he gives his time, you know, time and time to me is the most invaluable gift, right? Because that's the one thing you can give and you never get it back. You can give money to all kinds of things, right? It's yeah. money that you can make more of, but, yeah. you know, giving of your time to others to help in some way to me is much more valuable. That's just yeah. my personal, not, not to say that a lot of these charities don't need money too, but I, I just think that, you know, when you give of your time, um, it shows that you care, right? Yeah. That you care more than just, you know, writing a check or, you know, that you're willing to get down and dirty with whatever it is, right? You're willing to help in any way you can. Yeah, because most people realize and maybe take some time that money is not as important as time, right? Because you can make more money, but you can't get back yesterday. No. Nope. So when somebody volunteers their time, it's the ultimate in giving, probably, you know, unless you give like organs or your life, you know, some people right, they, right. They give their life in service of others. Um, and we respect and appreciate those people. But to give your time on a regular basis speaks a lot. Cause that yeah. is a big thing. Yeah. yeah. And Chris says he has those thoughts all the time about, about what Chris about um, feeling like maybe you don't have something to give. I'm not sure what you clarify that for me. Like definitely that. have something to give. If that's what you're yeah. saying, I, th I call that bogus. Yeah. Chris, cause you're a great guy. You definitely yeah. have something to give. Yeah. Always put it out there. It's like you said. Yeah. Just put it out there and it'll, you know, it, the universe will take care of itself. Yeah. <laughs> And these core values, you know, a lot of us here are Master Networks people. If there's people that are watching on replay or maybe you're observing and not commenting, that's cool too. And you're not really unsure where these came from. These are the core values that we adopted from Master Networks uh, because they happen to be very solid values. And some companies are looking for core values so that they can, sometimes they do it for the wrong reason, just to sound good to their customer base, like they're really thought you know, introspective and giving company. <laughs> they're not, but they put a lot of thought into it, they put right? a lot of thought into it and they post it up there and you ask them to recite it and they'll be like, recite what? 
Right. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Talking about. They're on the wall, right. but I, I have to go over to the wall to read them. Yeah. Right. Except with human resources, they could tell you what those mean. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> but if you actually adopt them and you live them, then those values will be put out there for people to see and you attract people to you who value those same things. So when you're looking for your audience, if we're talking business, that's a, it's a great thing. And then we do this in branding. It's, you know, what, what's important to you? What are your values? It's one of the ways we can find out what makes you different and how to attract audience of the same like-minded people, right? Well, tell them what right. you believe in. If they believe right. in it too, guess what? They'll find you. Right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. All right. Do we want to put up some of the, let's, we? let's, yeah, maybe we could start putting up a few. We'll put up a few. Let's say. Put up a few. All right, so Chris, you said Chris up there, so let's go to Chris's uh, He's our, community council. That's awesome. That's awesome, Chris, and we appreciate that because, you know, uh, there are so many things coming, so many great things coming out of our community council at Master Networks, which is awesome. Yeah, it's really, it's really uh, kind of come into something great this year. I think because we get a lot of great people coming in. Um, and as we understand it more, and I'm, I'm not the most community minded, I, you know, a lot of people are, are very, they, they volunteer a lot of their time in, in, in many different places. And, and I give huge respect to those people. I don't necessarily do that, but to join a community council to say, hey, what can I do? And there's so many things you can do because there's so many initiatives that come out of that, that sometimes people find their thing. Like you have a, a certain attachment to a, a charitable organization that you're passionate about. And unless you start giving, you don't find it. Right. Right. And look, uh, we say this all the time too. You have to be passionate about it. Right. Yeah. Whatever it is, whatever it is in business and in life, in order to be successful, you have to have a passion for it. But, you know, it's passion behind everything. <laughs> but um, sometimes I think with contribution, people don't put the two together. It almost seems like a chore. Like I got to give and like, we're not just talking about charity, right? We started out talking about wherever you show up, bring yeah. something to the table. You know, you show up at a party. Yeah. You bring a bottle of wine, you know, but bring something else. <laughs> right. Bring something right. More. Bring, don't, don't bring a bottle of wine and then be a wet rag. Yeah. Right. You know, bring a bottle of wine and say, Hey, let's share this. And you know, what is it? Do you what is do you like this wine or what's your favorite wine? Right? Like yeah. you can start a conversation simply by saying that. Yeah, and you know what? And and I'll always go back to a lot of what Tina has taught me. One of the things she taught me early about building networks is you got to get people talking. When she said that to me, she said it one time, and I was like, yes, like it clicked in my head. You just want to get people talking. And for me, as um, a former shy person to get me to talk would have taken a lot. Now, if you engaged with me, I would talk, but I wouldn't be able to, you know, start anything. So do that contribution part. It's like when you start a conversation with somebody when you bring something to the table, when you engage with another person, you don't know what you're doing. You may be changing their life because nobody thought to engage with them before. Yep. And if two people sit there quiet, I mean, somebody's got to make the first move. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, and I think we said this uh, in the last episode, it's like, you know, when you run into someone at the grocery store, or, you know, smile, like, you don't know what kind of day that they've had, right? You, you could change so much just yeah. by being kind. Well, uh, kind of. Debbie, I would love that. Let's share a bottle of wine. I don't know about you, but I'm a red girl. So red. Uh, I'm red. red. You're red. Oh, so yeah. anybody that drinks wine on the call, let us know. Are you red or white? Yeah, that'd be that? interesting. That'd be that really be interesting. interesting. I would I would like to know that. That would it's be good really to know for future get togethers and gatherings. Yeah. Yeah. So red or white, put that in the comments. We want to know that too. We'll get to some of your, your contributions part. But you know, look. It never hurts to contribute by bringing a bottle of wine to my home, just so you know. I'll mark <laughs> yeah, it down as a very contributing thing you've done. <laughs> me too, me too. 
There we go. Sweet Lisa, sweet red. Oh, she likes a sweet red. I like a dry red. Ah, okay. Pasquale, vino rosso. Oh. <laughs> red wine. We we know it's, it's, it's Italian for red wine. <laughs> or, or is that a label? I don't know. Maybe that's a label, Pasquale. I don't know. Regina, she's like both. She's like, I'll take okay, both. Okay, Just bring it. <laughs> well, you know, so here's my thing. I love red. But, you know, if any, for anybody that's doing keto, Prosecco is really good if you're on a keto. Oh, Robert says bourbon, please. Mm. And I know Larry Blackman's going to say any brown liquor, right? He's a maker's man. So. <laughs> Wait for Barry. Oh, no, there's Larry. Oh, a red, red blend. blend. That's good, too. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now we're off the topic of talking talk about wine so much. I start getting excited. I'm thinking maybe I'll go downstairs a second. Just <laughs> Steph, maybe you can carry on while I go get my <laughs> go grab your wine while you're grabbing your wine. <laughs> this is good. This is you know who said Pasquale said this. Somebody said this to me many years ago. Good friend of ours, he's a sommelier. This guy spent his life just studying wine. Um, he's the he he um Formerly in a former career, worked in rest in the restaurant world and oversaw about five restaurants for their wines. And I went to him one day when I started drinking wine. I was like, I was like, hey, hey, tell me what's a really good wine. Now he he bills himself, he markets himself as the uh, anti-snob wine guy. Okay. He said to me, he goes, Rob, I could give you something that I think is amazing, and it's about $65 a bottle. He goes, and you could take a sip of it and you could hate it. He goes, sure. it just depends on the it's exactly Pasquale. That's what he said. He goes, the best wine is the one you like. I said, well, thank sure. God, because I can't afford $65 a bottle. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll be Woo. doing little shots of it instead of having a glass of it, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Savoring it. <laughs> oh my. You want know, something? We were we were getting trying to get people to comment earlier, but now it's like we say, you know, what's your favorite wine? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We got all and kinds of everybody's blowing here. up the board. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, and do you see what Pasquale uh, said? Okay, he learned it from a salmon yet as well. So, ah, uh, yeah. See, there you go. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Appreciate it. Ah, uh, Karen, you're amazing. So I was just I went to Karen did an event. Her band Fallout forty years together this past Saturday. Um, and that was, uh, for a fundraiser. So that was amazing. So if you guys missed that, you'll have to make sure to, um, follow Karen and follow the band and go, go to the next one. 40 they years and still rocking. That's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. Good. 40 years since. And let me tell you, they were like bringing the house down. Nice. It was awesome. That's nice. So. I wish I could sing. I wish I could play an instrument, but alas, no, that is not my skill set. <laughs> I always wanted to. I just sing in the car so nobody can hear me. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Let's let's go back to that. We're theme talking again. about contribution. contribution. Let's go back to contribution. We went on this little wine tear. I know. For let's, a let's bring it back around. All right. <laughs> um, but but I love coming back to this. How you make people feel because what I love about this statement is it takes you out of it because it's not about you. It's no, it's about, about the other person. Other how you the other person, how you make the other person feel. So if you're self-conscious, understand something. It means you're focused on self. You want to be others conscious. So you're always thinking about the other person. How are you making them feel? And that's the backbone of, of this whole uh, program that Steph and I have put together is how are you making them feel? So I want you to think about this. When you think about these core values, the first one being relationships, and you know, and, and it's obvious, well, you have relationships, we got to build them. But how are you making the other person feel? How could you make them feel any better if you yourself aren't getting better yourself? Right. We we would say right. that people who can't help themselves can't help anybody else. Right. So yeah. Like, something. you know, on the plane, you you know, the plane's going down and the mass drops. You got to give yourself oxygen before you could help others. Right. Yeah. Um, and we, I think we all lose sight of that sometimes, right? Sometimes we get so engrossed that we want to help others that we forget to help ourselves in the process. Yeah. You know, and it's not selfish to improve yourself because then you'll be better for other people and lots of other people. So right. that's where the number two comes in. So we're up to number three today talking about contribution. And um, if, if you're just joining us and you didn't hear, uh, Steph wants to know, put it in the comments, you know, what you're doing to give 
or give back and any form of contribution. And look, it doesn't have to be a charity. Let's be clear. It doesn't have to be a charity. No. You could be giving to a neighbor, to a friend, to a family member. Just what are you doing to contribute? What do you bring? You know, I always say, you know, um, if you have nothing good to bring to my table, please don't sit at it. <laughs> right? Like if you can't be positive and, and, and look, not, not everybody's positive all the time. I get it. We all, you know, stumble sometimes, but for the most part, I want to just surround myself with good, positive people. You can't be the the negative Nancy or I can't, you know, I have to choose to walk away and say, I'm sorry, I can't hang out with you. Cause right. That's just too much for me. Yeah. I've, I've had enough of you. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Well, sp speaking of surrounding yourself with positive people. Yep. We've got a surprise guest, don't we? Woohoo. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, wanna, you want to introduce who we're going to bring? You want to tease everybody? We got a surprise guest. We, we flowed. Oh, we you know what? I in. think we should ask them to guess who they think it is. <laughs> okay. So for most of us who run in our circles, you maybe you want you to think about one of the person who is probably, I don't want to say contributing the most, but is putting themselves in a position to help on a larger scale. Right? Yes. There's, they're, they're kind of at the forefront of a lot of the endeavors and initiatives we have in Master Networks for contribution. Let's see if they can guess. I yeah, wonder... throw some comments out there. What do you, who do you think it might be? Silence. Ooh, Nobody wants to get on. it wrong and offend somebody. I think there's like this delay or something. <laughs> well, uh, this, this is a really good guess. That's a good guess. Uh, the man's, the man, both Debbie and oh, Debbie Rob. put Larry. Um, so Tina Campbell, that's a good guess. Um, Debbie also says she's hoping it's Simon Sinek. <laughs> <laughs> I called him, he was busy. <laughs> Could <you imagine>? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So let's, uh, let's actually I wish we had a prize. Uh, Larry says Sammy. That'd be another good uh, one. So that another would. Good one. But we do have a winner. winner. We do have a winner in we the do audience. We do have a winner. We do. We, we do, do have, have a, winner. a winner. Mr. Pasquale Palumbo got it right. Because we have this. Barry in the house. <laughs> welcome, Barry. welcome, Barry. You guys are great. I'm telling you, this is so much fun. <laughs> Good to be here. How are you guys doing? Thank, Thank you, you for, for coming, coming to play with yeah. us. My yeah. pleasure. Thanks for asking me. I appreciate it. Of course. Absolutely. And you know, Pasquale got it. He was the only one that got it. And you know, I don't know how he got it, but you know, he knows you, obviously. And and a lot of people who especially who are connected with the community council <laughs> master networks know that. You are the co-chair, right? Because I know you do share that post um, with with Mary, right? Yep. Um, and helping to take what we do here in bringing people together and giving back in in big ways while connecting people, right? It's all about the networking, the relationships that, that intertwine us. So thank you for coming, Barry. And we are talking about contribution. Here. So we know that you probably one of the best people to speak about this with your work, but maybe tell us, because I know you go back in our, in our county about 35 years of networking, but you're also deeply involved in some giving causes. Tell us a little bit about your history in giving, maybe why you started sure. out. And well, I started out as an insurance broker for Liberty Mutual in 1987. And like any other insurance broker, it was really just, you know, do some community stuff to try to get some leads. I didn't quite understand networking. I didn't quite understand community. I just figured that was what you're supposed to do to try to build a business. In 1994, I was fortunate enough to be introduced to and, and chosen to go through a program called Leadership Rockland. Uh, I had decided that Rockland was going to be my home. I wanted to learn more about it. It's, it's, a, it's a really great program. And I'll, I'll certainly talk to anyone who's interested in hearing more about it because every county has one, Leadership Westchester, Leadership Orange, the whole region is there's opportunities for that kind of program pretty much everywhere. And uh, it opened my eyes to a, a whole nother world of, of how you can walk through uh, your day to day uh, as a business person, but also come at it from a viewpoint of uh, community and contribution and being part of the solution versus being part of the problem. Um, so I, I went through that program 
And I just jumped into one of the things that they encourage is to jump into some of uh, the not-for-profit worlds and be on boards and being be involved in events. And so I, I kind of jumped into that in the deep end very quickly. And it changed my life. It changed my world in ways that I still don't actually truly understand. Probably someday down the road, I'm sitting on a porch, uh, grandchildren running around. I'll be think about it and it'll come to an understanding of how much it changed my life. But uh, it brought me to a place where I really over the time have feel that I'm really more of a community leader that sells insurance uh, to make a living, pay your bills, uh, as opposed to say an insurance agent that's just out there trying to be part of his community. Uh, so that's how I, I wake up in the morning and that's how I go through the day. And it's, um, it, you know, it's, it's not just all altruistic either. I don't just do it because I'm not Mother Teresa. Anyone who really knows me knows I'm definitely not Mother <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> okay. But uh, I gain a lot from it. I gain a sense of belonging to a, a something bigger than myself. I, I get a sense of, uh, of, of, you know, this kind of work has to be done by somebody. Uh, why not me? You know, why not? And, I, and you should be saying that to yourself. Why not me? If you have the time and you have the talent, and certainly if you have the treasure, um, those are the three things you, you, need, you, know, you can give of yourself freely. Um, so you should, you should be trying to figure out ways to do that on any scale that works for you. Now, I'm, I'm at a point in my life where my kids are all grown young adults, so I don't have the same kind of obligations that a lot of people in our chapters have, and that's cool. I mean, I, I just happen to be at a different place. You know, but there are little things you can do, whether it's uh, being on a PTA committee or, you know, doing a fundraiser or, you know, if you get to a point where you want to jump into something a little bit deeper, get on a board of directors of something that. But the first rule of thumb should be um, find something that you're really, truly passionate about, whether it's feeding the hungry, uh, serving homebound elderly through Meals on Wheels, uh, working with the animal shelter if you're you know for the you know these are all places I've spent time doing some of my community work. So you know that that's really how all this came about. And then uh I don't know how long ago it was, but I it, it I discovered a knack for being able to put together golf outings for charity. So I, I got into a pattern of of getting of doing that in a significant way for for at least the last 25 years. Uh, so I, I've lost track of the number, but I enjoy it. So people think I'm a one trick pony that all I do is golf outings. I do them because I know how to. I do them because I enjoy golf. Um, and you're good at them. And I do it because it's it, it's necessary. It's a good source of fundraising for these organizations that have missions that need to be accomplished. So, um, so it's a kind of combination. And through that, through all of this work, I've really gathered around me such fantastic people. I have such really tremendous, fantastic friends that I've met through these activities. It's really enhanced my life. So there's, there's a lot of benefits to doing it. And uh, I, I don't see any downside to it at all. One interesting thing that, that I took away from what you said was you said you see yourself first as a community leader and then as an insurance agent, which I thought was very interesting how you see yourself, you know, you put that kind of as your persona first and your work, you know, your work, your job, uh, second. And right. I think what you're, what you're doing is the way it reads to me is that you, you're taking that part of you, which is real, right? Cause sometimes our work and me as a brander, it's like, I could do other things and branding is not solving the world's problems necessarily. But what my company is doing is it's allow me to, like you say, make a living, support my family, provide, and freeing up some of my time to do some of those things that I, I love to do. And, you know, one of the places I love to give back is, is helping people through networking. It, it actually is something that I kind of stumbled upon that I, I, I'm kind of pretty good at it. And if I can connect people and connect the right people, then a lot more people win. And I was having a conversation uh, earlier today with somebody who was talking about um, having first world problems. 
having to go to uh, these high-end events at places where um, sitting on boards where they're talking about things that don't seem to matter in the grand scheme of things. And what I said was, yeah, but you're sitting at a table with people who are discussing first world problems because they're the ones who are able to then help with the bigger problems of the world because they, money's not really an issue. Time is not an issue. So we do our work, right? So it could free us up with some time and money to work towards other things. And I like how you framed yourself that way. Yeah, <clears throat> that was, and Barry, you know, um, and if anybody has any questions for Barry, please put them in, in the chat. So well, that, Debbie um, Mann did, she actually asked me, I asked what you were drinking when we were talking about wine. Oh. <laughs> and I said, you think that's a uh, coffee in Steph's cup? And then I took a sip from my coffee. It's just cold water, water. <laughs> it's, it's tequila and, not, and you know i i do, in the bag <laughs> i do believe that um our jeopardy champ uh put in the comments because he is the jeopardy champ that's why he's the jeopardy he, champ, right? you, Barry. <laughs> he, he was the one that knew it was you bear that's right well the only one who knew yeah pasquale is the greatest man good man really good man He's a good man. Um, yeah, I, I, I tell you, I mean, I've done a lot of different things over the years and it's been it's been a great ride. I mean, you really get I, I go to really great events. I mean, I, I go to some really amazing, you know, because I helped plan them and I helped be part of the organization that put it on. Um, you know, for instance, say Meals on Wheels, they just had their annual gala, which is called Cornucopia. And that you know i'll give credit where credit's due there's a, a woman named risa hoag who uh and then one of our own lisa falone from the friday group our co-chairman and they were part of the meals board and they just revamped it so they get 20 chefs from 20 restaurants to cook table side for 20 specific tables at this event so each table has its own culinary experience so what i'm eating at table one Table two has a completely different chef with a completely different uh, type of food. And it's just an amazing event. It's a major fundraiser, but it's an amazing event. And great people and like-minded people show up at these things. So, so it's, like, like it's, it's, it's like Master Networks. Uh, we, a lot of us go to a lot of different meetings because we want to be around the people that are in the chapters. And I like to be involved in the community because the people that are really involved are really great people to be around. And we love to support each other, right? I mean, yeah, that's true. Again, it's all goes back to how you make people feel. And when we all come to look, we, you know, you can come to a meeting in, in our region, and sometimes you'll see six or seven presidents in one meeting, you'll see several area directors in one meeting. You'll see the regional partner in as many meetings as she can get into, right? So that's the beauty, um, I feel, of that, right? We want to be around each other all the time because we can feed off each other. That positivity, it's like, you know, it feeds your soul. And that uh, agrees. And that, yep, so true. Love this. Absolutely. And you know, to your point, Barry. When people are coming together for a, a cause to help others, what I also see there, and I don't think people really think about this. They think, oh, you're going to go there and you're going to support you. You've donated, you know, X amount of dollars and it's going to go to a charity. That's awesome. That is great. But think about the people who come together through that sit down who maybe never met before could get introduced and where you create a relationship where there wasn't there before that relationship could spark something bigger that may not have happened before some other in of value right more value money. yeah you know and i love so on the networking thing that what i was talking about before at lisa's here's what she said yeah she just introduced ellen um to somebody at the kent local uh, public library inviting ellen to present zoom programs in the community to support young parents who might be feeling isolated and overwhelmed right now. that's awesome that's lisa incredible. that's awesome that's Incredible. So think about it. What did Lisa do? She introduced two people, which is like, oh, big deal. It's a huge deal. I, I want to kind of touch on real quickly. I don't know how much time you, you want to keep me on this thing, but uh, I do want to touch on the idea. Like, you know, you hear uh, Steph will say it a lot. I say it all the time. 
people want to do business with who they know, like, and trust. Um, if you jump into this kind of lifestyle of community giving and being involved in something to whatever your schedule and your time, talent, and treasure lead can lead you to, <clears throat> what better way for someone to get to know you than you working with someone in a combined effort, uh, a joint effort to achieve a mission that's going to help others. I mean, the way you do one thing, the way you do everything. That's what Tina says all the time. Probably one of the most basic fundamental statements of, of, of living your day to day. You do, you know, so if you show up on time, if you make a commitment to do this and you show up on time and you do it without complaint, and 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 people's going to say, wow, you know, you know, he he or she really, you know, is a great person to be around. I probably need them. I well, look at that. I need them for what I need them for. So the way that they have been involved without asking for anything in return, just giving for giving's sake, um, they're going to go out of their way to do the same level of performance for the for what they do in business for me. And it can be a help, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, Master Networks is a business organization, but on a whole different level than anything else I've ever come across. And like Rob said, I've been doing this for 35 years. But it does help your business because you, people really, truly get to know the real you. So when the point is just do it because you want to do it, because you can do it, not because you're looking to get business out of it. Okay, and that's that's why you should be passionate about it because people just like you. But when you're being hunted at a networking event, and you know you're being hunted as as an end user, people know that you're just pitching in just to see if you can get your foot in the door. Um, What's interesting about that too? What I found because I was I was by the way I, sorry I was that guy several years ago that when you and I met for the first time it was before Master Networks we met for the first time, you know because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I met Barry and. And I don't think I was pitching Barry or anybody else, but it was kind of that mindset of who can I meet that can give me business? And I think back now, I'm like, with everything I've learned, I'm going, oh my gosh, it's completely no, no, backwards it's, because you never get the thing you go after when you have that mindset. It was only until I really learned um, and really learned it inside of Master Networks was that if you just give enough value away, people will go out of their way to send people your way. And I, I lived that on faith. You know, you got to have faith. People go, oh, how long is it going to take me to get business? So how much how much value can, get, can you give away and how fast? How fast can you give it away? And how authentic? Like, again, you have to be transparent and authentic with people. If you really want people to, you know, no phony. Like, nobody wants to hear a phony. Nobody wants. And, again, like we say, too, ditch the pitch. Like, don't pitch to me. We're all in this together. We all are looking to build our business. But again, how can we help you? Right? How how can we help each other? What 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 are you struggling with that I can help you with? Well, I just it's all those are great points. And Rob's point really, you know, instead of saying what can this person do for me, saying what can I do to help either this person it's not for profit, this organization, my chapter, uh, with with zero expectation of a return. Just zero that out. Just say, I'm just going to do this because I can, because it needs to be done, okay, because it's in my skill set. And it will open worlds to you that will just, it will just change your life. It really changes your life. And then pass that on. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll shout out to Mike Barneri. I mean, here's a guy that kind of, came into the business community a little less than a year ago. And, you know, you rec I recognized in him, you know, a lot of the stuff that got me on my path. And, and I said, yeah, you should try this and you should try that. You maybe join this board and, you know, and he's jumped into it and he's the greatest guy. He's a, such a great guy. And he's making such strides and being a, a real factor in, in helping not only his business, but his community and, and the bigger community and master networks. And, uh, and some people take to it like fish to water. And he is a people, great guy. Yeah, so I, I agree. It's it's out there for you guys to uh, to grab. You just got to yeah. go looking for it. Yeah, 
Well, thank you, Barry. We're gonna we're gonna wind up. Um, I just want to say that you know I want to appreciate you you coming by and sharing a lot of that, and hopefully you inspired people to to give not just to charity, but again just to give of whatever you've got wherever you are, and it can start with a little step like that, because I was again I said earlier I was the guy who was not giving, but as soon as I thought about what could I give, what do I have to give? Well, give whatever you got. So I gave design away. And it led to a charity that that helped sick children and still a member of that board today, helping sick children. And you don't know what you can do that is really going to make a difference. But if you don't put it out there, you're never going to be able to truly find it. People want to know, look, everybody's looking for people who are going to pitch in for whatever the cause, right? We're always looking for volunteers for everything. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Barry. Thank you for thank coming you. and hanging thank out with us. Dad, and thank you, Rob, for and thank you for sharing your your wisdom on with all of us. I appreciate it. Thank you for letting me be here. See all right, Barry. Take care. Love you, Barry. <laughs> Such a good guy. And we got Such we got a lot of those comments in, in the in the chat too about people saying similar things. If you know Barry, then you know. Um very, very humble. Uh, Debbie Barry's like, I don't know how many guys are gonna keep me on here. He's like, I, I can stay on nine. I love wait, it. Wait, wait, Debbie. It. So if Barry doesn't stay on, you're not gonna stay till nine. <laughs> right. What does that mean? Hold on. <laughs> what, does that, what does that mean? So I, I want to throw something out there. Um, well, we start to wind this down because we'll end on time as usual at eight o'clock. But um, I want people to tell me if you were here early and you know what song that Steph and I were playing when we came on. Put it in the chat. I want to see who's going to be the winner of this. I want to see if anybody was listening. I know not a lot of people get on right at that moment because it was only on for a minute or two. But if you know what song we were playing, either the name or the band or special points, if you know the name and the band, what song was it? There's a few people and we'll see. And you just put that in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But I do want to recognize that, look, you know, I'm looking in the comments here and, you know, Mike Baxter says he's, he was, you know, he was on the local planning commission and, you know, um, you know, Larry Blackman, you know, uh, North Texas food bank, you know, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. So, you know, um, Make sure you're checking that out, right? We want to thank you guys for anything that you're doing to contribute um, yeah. in your community, in Master Networks, just in your life. Yeah. We appreciate you. We appreciate the contribution you're making tonight because you're contributing to this live right now by putting those comments in the yeah. chat. You know, we always say that this is highly interactive and, and we'll highlight as many comments as possible because, again, you are showing up with something of value. And if this is, it, it, we always want to make it educational. We want to make it, you know, entertainment. Like I always like to say, we, we strive for the best in edutainment. So if you're learning something <laughs> and you can have some fun, chill with some friends, that that's, that's a win in our column. Um, but yeah, you, you, we want, we want you to be able to bring whatever it is you got to things like this so we can make it better all the time. And uh, if, and, and on that note, by the way, if you haven't liked the master networks, Inc, Facebook page, go ahead and do this because this is where this stuff is coming out. And there's many other lives that go on during the week, not just hours. They go on a regular basis with lots of great content interviews with people. You can gain insights here. Um, so if you go ahead right now and hit like on the Master Networks Inc. Facebook page so you don't miss any of this stuff because there's a lot of good stuff that's coming out. Right, right, Steph? So, so yes. So Debbie is saying, can you say that again? What are we doing? So if you, if you were on from the very beginning, <laughs> Rob played a song in the very beginning of this live. Can you name that song? Mm. So, you know, come on guys. Anybody hear that song? No. Nobody. Maybe I should give a hint. I was like, so, so we got. I, I could see people like, "What?" Oh, uh, she was making. Dinner. She was making dinner. <laughs> now, now you're getting called out because we you know, know what oh, I say. I was, like, I was late. Rob, can you play it again? Oh, okay. So maybe I should play it. Is that why? Maybe That's you cool. should play it and let's see who who can answer the quickest in the comments as to what what it is. Uh, now now it's going to come fast. You watch. He's going to be the first. 
No, it's not Inagata Tavita. <laughs> no, Rob Man, he was giving dinner instructions to his wife <laughs> making dinner. Okay. Oh, Barry's, Barry's supposed to name, name that tune. That tune. <laughs> ah, Rob Man, give a little bit. Who can tell us who sings it? Lisa, so close. But no, it's not Oreo Speedwagon. Come on. I can't believe it. I now, love somebody's, this. Somebody's Googling right now. I'm loving this. And so. Not Oreo Speedwagon. Good guess, though. Oh, man. Just a reminder that all you have to do is give a little bit. You didn't right? tell me that Mike was a, a jokester. Super trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, super tramp. Yeah. That's a funny guy. Pasquale, I think Pasquale just Mike's says motorhead for everything. Motorhead, there we go. What Why it? not? <laughs> Little Lemmy. I'd like to hear Super their tramp. version of that one, Pasquale. Larry said cheap <laughs> trick. Pretty good guesses, but no. Mr. Mike Baxter got the name of the band, but Rob Mann got the name of the song is Give a Little Bit by Super Tramp. Um, <laughs> because Lemmy I love is it. <laughs> Rest in peace, Lemmy. I think he died, didn't he? He's, he's gone. <laughs> So he's not giving any more. So, <laughs> so what's next? We're winding down here. So we only got four minutes left. What do we need to do? We need to. So talk about we need to ask everybody if they know what the next core value is that we're going to be talking about at mm. the next episode. Put it in the chat. Yeah, do you know what the next core value is? If you do, put who's going to put it in the chat first? Yeah, go ahead. And it's got to be in order. So it's the next one. It's not the last one. Right. Oh. It's the next one. And we have a winner. Regina <laughs> Reyes. Thank you, Regina. Oh, all right. Accountability. Regina. That's right. So accountability will be the next one that we do in our next episode. So we're going to be back here on, uh, let's see, episode four, December 16th. December 16th. Right? So put it in your calendars, please. If you've been coming here, we appreciate it. Please keep coming back. And please yeah. tell somebody about this and bring them. Because the more people that come on here, the more fun this is. And we, Steph and I always talk about how can we make it better, right? Yeah. So if you guys have, you know, we, and we want the interaction with you guys. So I loved this. I loved this whole thing about the wine and, and the, you know, guessing the, the song and who was the special guest tonight. It was awesome. So yeah, that was good. That was good. And uh, I we always that. like to, um, we always like to end up with, with some thank yous, right? There's some people we always like to thank. Yeah. So you know, Renee Pride, we really need to thank Renee, right? Thank because Renee. thank you, Renee, because it was you who asked Rob and I to do this on the ink page. So we really want to thank you and thank you for all of your support. And Tina Campbell, of course, you know, without Tina, we wouldn't be here, you and I. So, yeah. um, you know, always have to give thanks to the queen of culture and retention. So, um, you know, thank you, Tina. And, and, and look, thank all of you guys for being here. Thank you, Barry. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all you do in the community and, and, and on the community council for master networks, but all over in your community. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you everybody for, for all you do and everything you do. Um, and for, for supporting us in this, uh, thank you, Steph. Um, you know, just thank you, you Rob. Do this without other people, you can't do this without other people. If it was just me and Steph here, we'd still be laughing. I can guarantee you. But it, yeah, we would be. We like, would be. But but it, it not would not fun. be as fun. It wouldn't be as fun. Like, listen, you know, the banter that goes on from all of you guys. I love that. You know, Pasquale, I love it. You know, uh, Larry and Barry and Regina, Debbie and Rob. Uh, man, right? The other Rob. <laughs> I, I don't know if Debbie Men's coming back next week because after Regina said accountability. <laughs> oh, I like that one. she doesn't like that one so much. <laughs> all right, Debbie, then you better show up, all right? Because maybe we got some, maybe some things we can straighten out there for you. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. And I just, I'm going to end it and then I'll give it, pass the baton to you, Rob. Spread love, everybody. Just spread love wherever you go. Make sure you remind yourself that it is about how you make others feel. Yeah, always. And I'm just going to end on that because if you go out there and you make other people feel good, you know, people have asked us in this region how we've had such great growth and what is it that that is what it's making that growth so um, 
astronomical and the retention so high. And it is always, it's how we're making people feel intentionally, the other person. And it makes people want to come back. How many times have we heard, I hate meetings, but I love coming to mine, their chapter meeting or any of these. So spread love, go out and make people feel good. And we will see you on December 16th. Thank you all. Love you guys. Good Love night. You guys. Bye now.